Hello people, Peter here, down in the old man shed. And well, I thought I'll stick my face in front of the camera because this is a very special uh, film. Because this is to say a very, very, very big thank you. Because at this moment in time, when I looked on the YouTube, I'm up to a thousand subscribers. So, <laughs> so what can I say? Just a very, very, very big thank you. I mean, I think you're all mad. <laughs> Stick, but you know, yeah, I'm blown away. I mean, obviously, it's only a little layout, seven by four, but um, obviously, hopefully, with me talking you through problems and helping you explain things, uh, you obviously like what you see, and um, that's what I always will intend to do I mean more than showing you what I've done on the layout because the layout the, the actual layout itself it's busy enough you know there's nothing else to sort of really do to it it's just the stock that runs on it really that I'll change um, maybe the actual thing I've still got to do and I will do once we're at this stupid virus situation if we can start moving around a little bit because I physically want to sort of uh, talk to someone and, and, and uh, get their advice from someone I will probably fit um, lights onto the layout, you know, I mean, I've got these uh, yard lamps on there which are all dummies and things, you know, uh, but that's not to say I'm going to go and start doing night filming or anything, but it'd just be great to have them working, I do like to be able to have things actually working and uh, maybe put something in the shed as well, you know, because uh, there's some detail in the shed that is, you know, you can't see because it's dark, so if I put lights in that, but that would be simple to do that'd be great so that's the you know that's what we'll do on the layout but otherwise ordinarily um, it's just the stock that's running on it and uh, what I can do to improve it and uh, following on from me chatting here there will be there is a video clips of uh, running showing all the bits and pieces I've been doing recently modifying the class 66s with the new light units uh, I've done another end of train lamp flashing end the train lamp I've done um, I've got some uh, loads for the wagons that are made, uh, they're made out of resin and that's what I do I'll give a big shout out to all the companies involved where I get that product from because they're all good so if I'm happy with them I'm quite happy to share the info with you guys so um, yeah but what can I say thank you guys thank you very much uh, really blown away um, yeah, thanks very much. Right, get my get my face off the screen, and I'll show you what I've been up to. All right, Let's catch you in a minute. Right, okay, guys. So uh, let's talk about the what I've been doing to the class sixty six. Now, um, if you, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the real world, um, there's more and more class sixty sixes that have been fitted with modified lights and. Uh, with the aid of the uh, illuminated models kit, which is here, right, it allows you to replicate what's going on in the real world and also to fix what Backman gave you from the outset, which was always with the class 66, was wrong. Uh, you've got to be able to solder. There's, a, there's the uh, soldering side. You can see the soldering tabs on this new kit is a lot bigger. That's the side with the LEDs showing. So. It's obviously exactly the same, okay. It's the same. Oh, now they've gone together. Oh well. But anyway, that's the uh, yeah. It's all marked up. You get the instructions that come with this. You don't just get that. You get a sheet of instructions of what to do. Um, and you have to solder. All right. But it really is quite straightforward. One day I may show you how to do it. But let's talk about what's happening with the world of uh, the 66s. Um, right. So the bug eye. Got the freight liner here. This is the large lensed one yeah so with this kit it's installed i've now got the white the large lamp and i've got the two inboard running lights working okay and that's prototypical that's how it should have been backman never did supply it that way all right um they're also going around now with all four illuminated believe it or not um so that's another thing you could talk about so that's uh you know gives you another option if you want i'm not i'm not talking about what your running numbers are going to be so when you look it up and you find out oh no it wasn't fitted with that they're all getting changed you know well i say they're all they're getting modified 
don't know what in what order or whatever. Uh, funny enough, as you can notice in here, maybe in this light you can see because he's wearing his very nice high vis jacket. That's not your ugly backman figure, all right. And I'll talk about that again uh, after this one. But anyway, so that's the one one version of the class 66. This kit puts right, so you can have it as prototypical how you want it to be. But it puts right the problems with backman, right? Where that, where you only got the one light there and the one light there. You now have two working inboard lights, and there are uh, tr um, forward and facing. So you'll get still got the red light. So you got your white running lights, but when it goes in reverse they become red all right so it's is is actually actually as it should be all right so don't worry about that because they uh they they fix that for you so that's the bug eyed let's put her down this one again you can have you know elect to have just the the two running lights and the one headlight all right and depending how you want to run it up you know you can have the nighttime one if you want but Bearing in mind it's not switchable once you've soldered, okay? Cleverer people than me can possibly work out how to uh, wire them all up with their resistors and then you can do it with F, you know, F stop numbers on your controller, like the Hattons, to give you different versions. But at this kit, for simplicity, you have to make a decision when you're soldering what light configuration you want. This one, I think, is fitted. I've got all four. All right, because that's what I say. This is one of the new um, styles, what's going on out there. Um, it would be correct just to have the outside and the two inner. It's also correct to have all four. And this one is fitted with all four. And again, you can see that I've put one of my drivers in there. So this is what I've been doing. I've been painting my little drivers up and changing them. And I think you can see it's really worth while doing it. Um, Anyway, show you them in a minute. So that's that version. Right, so let's look at what Backman first gave us. This is where they was wrong. That's what you get A at the bottom, though, including the driver figure. You can, there he is. I haven't changed him yet because I've not taken this one apart because I've not had to. So this is your early 66s. This is Backman's idea of a representation of daytime running lights. These two white patches at the side of the light so it's supposed to represent working well you know uh, daytime running lights that are supposed to be on and then obviously you would get the one big headlight which is what you go on the model so on this model you get that light there and you get that light there and vice versa when you're um, running in reverse but of course you would get the red running lights okay so that's what you got with that so i haven't done anything to that model because they do come out with a kit which can change that but it would mean drilling out making a hole where that white patch is where the little white tampo printing is and if you mess it mess that up you've you've ruined your loco all right so i haven't been brave enough to tackle that yet so this 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 little girl is just as she came out including even the driver in there all right sound fitted that's how i bought her from uh backman now the Here's the same loco, well not the same loco, but an EWS loco that would be the same as that one. But can you see only the four lights? Because this is what the modification to this this loco is. Where the white patches were, I haven't painted them over because I didn't want to, because uh, they're quite a precise little bit of tampo printing. And if you paint them over and if you ever wanted to put them back, you'll never be as good as what the original tampo printing was. So what I did is I elected to uh, get some masking tape, Tamiya masking tape. I stuck it on the, here we are. I stuck it on the back of a nice uh, strip of uh, something that I could peel it off of easily. Painted it black, and then cut out. Look, there's one there by my finger there. Look, there's one little square. Cut them out and use that to put over the white tampo printing. So it's not been ruined. You can't see it now. Well, you might be over on the camera, but really, you know, ordinarily, you can't see it. And that's how they've done it in real life as well, okay? Because where the white lights were at the side, they've done nothing about that other than sort of like the whole unit is a blank, is a plate holding the two new lights. So where the old running lights on the side, you don't see anymore. But the spacing for the lamps is exactly the same as what you're seeing there. 
So that is prototypical now. So the, obviously, it needs to say I've got all the four running on this one, and yet it's the old style 66. And uh, you're seeing the video following. I've done it on the uh, the DB, the red DB Schenker, because um, there's there's videos out there showing the EWS marooned, you know, looking exactly like this one going around. Might not be the right number, but I'm not really worried about that, guys. I ain't bothering about. It's not the you know the numbers don't correspond. That's what's happening in the real world at the moment, all right? So I'm just replicating that in model form. Uh, again, a little driver's been replaced in there. It's one of the things I'm getting at. So <laughs> I'll show you. Maybe that's what I'll show you next. So this is what this is what this lighting kit can fix for you. This illuminated models, you've got to be able to solder. But wow, well, as you'll see in the videos, well, well worth it, and it puts right the uh, the error that Backman came out with in the first place. Can understand Backman because they they've got three different locos. There's three styles there: the bug eyed, the one with the four lights, and the you know the one with the uh, the end of you know they they had to produce um, a circuit board that configured for all three, and of course it was impossible, so they just elected to do what they did. Once again, although these are all white lights, when it goes in reverse, the two inner lamps become red. You know it's all there on the kit, okay? Because it's got a red LED and a white LED side by side. Right, so that's enough about it. you'll see it. The proof is in the pudding when you see the video, okay, of them going around. Maybe not all these particular locos, but the ones I've been uh, working on. Right, so that's the light modification kit, and that's uh, a shout out to uh, what I think is a fantastic product illuminated models. I mean, that's all you get on the very first release. There was talk about having to change a resistor on the circuit board that's on the inside the loco. Um, they've they've revised that, they've changed their minds, and it's not necessarily so. All your soldering is those two pieces, and if you're like me, although you get the two to do one loco, well, you know what, guys, I've I've done two locos using the one. The, the back ends of these are still as they were from the factory, because because you know my my locos are always detailed at one end, so I don't need to have the same sort of feature at the back because there's always it's always pulling a wagon at the back there and if it's not if it's running light well it's got red lights there anyway so that's that's all correct so that does me however I am so happy with this I have bought enough to uh, to change all the engines if I want to all right and that might be a, one of the uh, I might do a how to video showing you exactly what you do all right so maybe that's what I'll do in the future for you very simple but you've got to be able to solder Right, uh, next I'm going to go on talk about wagon loads. So that's a shout out to uh, illuminated models. Now we're going on to going on to wagon loads. Okay, so these are three of my wagons here that take ballast or you know stone or whatever. And the loads I've got, I bought from a company called Make Your Mark Models, and they make resin loads for you not not so it's not um plaster of paris or whatever these are made of resin um and as in the case of that one you can have it uh, clean so it's i guess that's you know that looks very white when you see it compared to that one this one has been painted it's up to you if you want that done you pay you know you pay for what you get but these are resin they've got a nice card back they're clean they're super clean not too heavy there is a bit of weight there not as heavy as um you know if it's made out of plaster of paris or whatever it is the other stuff is and it's not powdery it's absolutely clean it doesn't leave any residue and the, maybe one of the better you know one of the great things about this this is the old the good old hornby sea cow right that's how she comes completely empty and quite light wagon so this adds a little bit to it but look you put that in and look at that you can hear the air coming out as you have to push that down into it the fit is so good absolutely gorgeous look at that all right to get that out i've now got to try and hook yeah push it from one side and whatever yeah so there you are so it's really oh, i can't even get it out there you go but the beauty is that even though i'm struggling to show you to get that out it doesn't mark the, the wagon at all all right so as again, it goes in, push down, and you can sort of hear the little, as it's gripping the plastic. All right, and just, yeah. that's that one. 
brilliant. So that's the, for the Seacal. Likewise for the good old heavy Dapol Freightliner. Again, it's resin, so it's nice and strong, but she fits perfectly. And if you want, actually what he tells you to do, if you want to just um, rub off the ends a little bit, because what that'll do, because you can see it's shaped and it fits in the shape, it would sit down. I think that's what I did on this one because I didn't want it standing proud, I wanted it in. So again, look, there you go. This one's possibly a little bit looser and it's deliberately so because I'll show you what's happened to it in a moment. He said so, was it kind of fall out? Well, there you are, not that bad, is it? There you are, but I won't shake that one because I think it will come out. And last of all, the good old Dapol one, even bigger, and as you can see, it will see the color. I don't know, can you see that's gray because it's been painted? You wouldn't have thought so, but a nice big chunky bit of resin. And you'll see, I'm going to explain all this in a minute. And, oh, yeah, and also comes with these blocks of resin. Put one either side because that allows, again, you can height variation. Look at that, beautiful in there again. See what I mean? Absolutely gorgeous fit really really good fit so there you are so that's brilliant so shout out to make your mark models for the resin loads okay so that's uh, that's who I've used on all my uh, wagons I didn't make my own loads this bloke's done far better job than I could ever done so and I'm happy with that oh right next okay and the train lamps I'm now using two products the very funny first one I got maybe a, a year ago was by DCC Concepts and as you can see I mean I'm not the tidiest but there's a heck of a lot of wiring that came with it there's the um, prototypical well not prototypical there's their trademark of the blue covered uh, chip that's the little microprocessor you know processor in there that gives you your flash there's a little switch on there that you slide it over and it flashes at some rate and you move it over it flashes at maybe a fast or a slower rate depending what it is they maybe over engineered this kit because the wires coming out of there that have been snipped off are three wires that you would have needed if you wanted to activate the lamp by using a magnet it's what's called a hall switch what it would be would be those wires there you would need to find a way to come through come through the bodywork have it near the wheels or somewhere hanging down and then as the train passed over the very powerful magnet that they supplied in the kit I think I've got one here oh let me just show you there we are that's that's the magnet that there that is super powerful magnet if I get it in here anything it's bloody just I won't get it off again because it's so strong get that out of the way for a moment but as it as the train or as the wagon would have passed over that wagon, it um, over that magnet it turns the lamp on or if it was on you know off whatever okay. I don't want that. I just wanted the idea when I put that on the track. Once the power is going to the track, the lamp would flash, and you can do that by snip by joining two of the wires and doing away with one wire altogether. All right, but I'm not going to go too much into this kit about that. Um, the beauty of it though is the, they provide you with the end of train lamp itself and it's absolutely prototypical of the current um, look of the lamp you know that, that's what's out there at the market in, in, even with the little shade over the lamp the only problem with it is it flashes too slow I mean yes it does flash but it's quite a slow flash let's, let's show you right the next one now I finally got round to working out how I could put an end of train lamp on the good old freight liner. And as you as you people know who's got this, this is a lot of this is cast metal. And you're thinking, how the hell are you gonna get a lamp on the end of that? Because all this is metal. But I have done it. There she is. Let's get it around that way. There you are, can you see it? But quite a lot of modification on this one. Now this is due, this is not DCC Concepts, this is now, surprise surprise, illuminated models. <laughs> That's what you get. Beautiful, you can, compared to what you've just seen, the um, 
the mess of wiring that it was um, my first attempt at DCC concepts and it's not their fault it's just me being messy this is what you get with this kit there's the little red LED yeah there's your little printed circuit board and at one side it says power and doesn't matter which way the power goes to the soldering tags but at the other end it does say LED and it's got a plus and a minus and that is because if you don't know all LEDs they have, they've got a plus and a minus so you've got to identify normally it's the length of the lead gives it away the longest lead is normally the plus the shortest is the minus problem with this kit is that the lead is almost I think um, is exactly the same length so basically you've got a 50 50 chance of when you come to solder that you've put the lead on the right way basically when you solder it and when you put it on the track and if it doesn't flash <laughs> take it off un unsolder the things and just swap the wires around and then she flashes. it's exactly what happened with me all right so it's not the end of the world but look at that how simple is that all right so this is what and uh, with that kit I bought another one because they supplied pickups and that's what I needed for this this wagon all right I took the wires off these wires I found a little bit too thick but I wanted these copper strips if they're copper yeah I'm sure they're copper and also the screws and what you see what I did there they are fitted underneath the bogey yeah the strips were too uh, longer so they just need to stip him back and then bending down over the wheel a little bit so they get can you see it there we are don't know if you can see see there's the strip so that's fine so when she's running around you don't see that so you won't notice that um, this bit luckily enough the very very end was plastic so I was able to drill through that at an angle and as you can see the wires are coming in from underneath they're black tacked to the chassis and then you take this piece off a little bit of plastic this is a plastic molding but underneath is exactly the same shape but it's in metal you got to drill and I went through the side you can see where they've gone through went through the through the side of the metal and then I had to make a small hole in this plastic as well so that then when I screwed this back on hiding all the butchery that you got to do basically all the wires are now going into one little hole um, the pickups yeah soldered the wires to that that doesn't interfere too much with the, the side to side of the bogey doesn't stop it and these being such a heavy loco anyway that's great goes to the inside there you are I'll just put a bit of black tack so that the circuit board is just doesn't float around I haven't cut oh, this is the sort of wire and I use the sort of wire that you use for um, you know the pickups from from in your, in your loco anyway sorry just knocking the camera um, so that's very th thin wire so a bit thinner bit thinner grade than that one that's a bit too thick for my liking and I thought it might have interfered with the uh, the side to side of the uh, the bogey so again Yes, you had to, you know, so this wagon is now being butchered in order to have this, but you'll see why the, the, the effects, you can see I made a hole, I made a, tried to drill through there once upon a time because I was going to come through this, but I don't know what's metal, what's plastic. Uh, so I gave up, so, you know, I've had this in the wings for a long, long while and I finally got round to working out how to do it. But, uh, so yeah, you've got the gubbins in there, but of course, and this is why this one is slightly, well, it's not loose, but with the old resin load again look at that brilliant see what I mean and she just fits in there lovely I can move it slightly here see that's it so I'd, I'd chamfered the edges a little bit so that it would sit slightly lower in the thing now the other thing is the only problem is this kit the LED is exactly that it's just an LED now a lot of people and even the uh, the video showing you them with the working with this all they've done is just put the LED on the end of the uh, the wagon and let it flash and for maybe a majority of people you will be happy with that but uh, well you know me me being me it's got to be in an end of train lamp now these wagons come with these little end of train lamps dummies 
and they look like let's show you this one this one i haven't modified is, it, is that the same one no it's not no, that's a bigger one that's bigger all right all right i'll, go, I'll talk about that one in a second so it's working and you'll see it i had to make a little hole in the back of this little bit of plastic and it is it is tiny but um, using the old pin drill made a little hole uh, made the back slightly bigger so it would take the LED super glued the LED into the back of it um, then I filled the hole at the front with um, super glue so it sealed it all in and made a lens and then you'll see what that's like on the track it, I'm absolutely over the moon with it and not only that the correct flash as well as you'll see compared to the DCC concepts rate of flashing okay so I'll show you that one in a second. So that's the end of that one. The last one, before I show you all the, the lamps, the, the flashing. You might have seen, well you will see in the videos, there's 15 of these beauties running around. Alright, 15. Um, when you see these, what you should really have seen is a, a Hatton's Class 66 going around instead. <laughs> because the money that I had earmarked for that, when I saw the reviews on the new Hattons and I thought oh god you're paying all that money and you've got to do all that work in order to get them it was a lottery again basically let's face it if you bought them you know did you stick for it and yeah I've got my two Hattons and they are working absolutely perfectly and they're the two best models on me layouts because they've got all the function everything works but of course spending a great deal of money and you're having to work on them well yeah so I elected, and it's very rarely for me, but I thought, well, I, um, I need some more rolling stock. Uh, these wagons are current at the moment, so I thought, right, let's have a look. And they, well, as you know, what's the company called? There is uh, Acura Scale. Acura Scale? Acura Scale? You know who they are. Uh, this one's never going to have a working end of train lamp on the end of it, it's going to live with this dummy simply because there's no way that I'm going to destroy any of the super detail that's on these wagons. I mean, they are phenomenal. Phenomenal? Phenomenal? I can't say it. Working, you know, I mean, you don't need to, I guess, but I mean, the fact that they're... St oh, God, they're perfect. They really are, but look at the underframe detail. I fitted them with hunt couplings. You just take off you know prize prize the um, the usual uh, method of uh, attaching the coupling to the wagon you can see where I've taken and removed that one and left it off then I took the uh, tension lock coupling out of it that's what it comes with and put the hunt coupling these are close couplings they work absolutely perfectly going around my second and third radius curves because there's that little bit of movement so there's no trying to derail each other or there's no edge to edge with the magnet they follow each other perfectly when you look at my up and coming video uh, you know following on from this you will see them 15 of them all in a line going along my track and just 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 have a little look at the top running uh, area there the, the walkway of all 15 they stay exactly all in line until it goes round the curve there's no wobbling. They're absolutely fantastic. I can't... Well, will I get more? Yeah, I will do. Uh, the other thing is, they came in five boxes, three in each box, because I've got 15 of them. Four boxes, absolutely perfect. The fifth box, one wagon, that little component there was lying in the box. It come off that was the only i mean you're telling me that you know out of 15 pieces that's the only fault that was on it where they've been packed and whatever and mr gpo and everything no matter who i don't know who handled it uh that's the only little bit that was actually laying in the box the problem was when i went just to uh stick it back in because the hole was there it was just needed to be put back in i did it with a pair of tweezers and the old tweezer curse we've all done it ping this little piece went flying off never to be seen again 
been swallowed up by the shed floor. Uh, slightly upset to say the least because it was down to me you know I mean okay shouldn't have been off in the first place but come on 15 wagons and that's the only problem I had with it blimey so I got onto a curious scale or aqua scale what they're called and said what the problem was they said yeah let us know what it is I took a picture of it so they really could see what it was and guess what they sent me out the other one so it was a slightly darker grey but I've just so happens I've got an exact paint match in my humble paints and if it matched, matches it perfectly uh, so they sent me a nice little envelope came with just that one little piece in it saying sorry about your problems here's the, here's the replacement part stuck it on or painted it stuck it on and I've now got 15 perfect wagons so I'm not going to uh, muck around with these anymore even even though you can see the hook they use a different style of hook as well you know the free link couplings uh, that's got a name but I don't know what it is uh, so that's going to live with a dummy lamp all right so I can't bring myself maybe it, who knows <laughs> he says maybe because never say never if these become cheap enough because when you work it out it's expensive but when you work it out what they are if you say like buy the three what it works out for each particular wagon and the details you're getting it's it does it's a very 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 good value for money yes it costs a fortune to get all you know all of them in one go but as i said that should have been a hatton 66 because you're looking at the uh, the loco the price you're paying for the loco and then of course the price you're paying for the uh, you know the proper sand chip to put in it and, and you're looking at a heck of a lot of money and yes, that was a heck of a lot of money, but I've got a perfect product there. The other one, a heck of a lot of money and still a lot of work to do. So, yeah, who knows, maybe in the future. Right, so what I'll do now is, um, before I show you these working and the difference in the flashing rate, uh, I'll show you something else that I've been doing. Uh, because with the early, just now, I just showed you the 66s with my new drivers because I've been on a bit of a painting binge. Right, here we are. So this is what you would get in your Backman Class 66. This is your driver. Quite a funny little thing with these little hat. Obviously legless, we know that. Sorry. Yeah, he's got a little peaked hat. Don't know what all that about. It looks like he's wearing a hoodie underneath the hat as well. Instead of, I just don't know what the idea was when they painted this up. So... This is what you're starting off with. Uh, this is what I have been doing. Okay, so there's another one on the end there. There, so you have to um, shave off his hat and get the old paint out. So uh, this is it. So, and you saw in a couple of earlier '66s, this is what I've been sticking inside me locos now. So it's the same driver, but looking, you know, there's the other one there. That's how they start off. Weird little thing like that. And that's how I finished up with them. Uh, there's one on the end there's nice wearing a nice little blue tie there, all right. <laughs> oh dear, I tell you, that was a fun. Uh, I think I've got quite a few there now, so you know, ready for. Uh, I might stick a few in the 37s as well now, because but the 37 you can't really, you know, it sits very low in the cab, so you can't really see him. Whereas on the 66s, uh, yeah, you can see him. But there you are. So yeah, great fun painting it all out. Um, yeah, really weird. So it, I think the hardest thing was getting the shape of his head right, you know, because you've got to take that hat off and give him a. a a normal you know head of hair sort of thing you know and uh, that hat well you can see it's it's uh it's flat peaked goes you know sticks out over the back of his head as well so i think that's probably the hardest thing that took me a little bit of care just to um make sure i've got the um the head shape can't can't accuse me of cutting the legs off because the legs are already cut off okay but there you are i think they're much much better so that's the figures i've been working on and I think I had the trains sort of running round, so I had a nice, uh, it was quite pleasant to do it because uh, whilst I was working away on this table with a very thin brush, um, I had the clickety clack sounds of my trains going around. I didn't have the sounds on, I just had the trains running. 
and I was just in my little world. All right. Don't uh, look at the briefcases. The briefcases come courtesy of this uh, original kit, DB Electric Locum, but of course because they're HO they're a lot smaller. So I used the figures to put into the Oxford cars, but not to put into the drivers of the uh, the loco engines. All right, so that's but that's where those little suitcases, uh, briefcases come from. All right, that was part of the kit. See, they've all got one, and I've got to do what Dave's trains does. You know, I've got to remember the next time I'm sticking one in a cab, stick a, maybe a newspaper on the front, or uh, certainly have a little briefcase at the side. Don't know. All right, that's it, people. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for sticking with me this long. As I say, if you now will be a running session, or maybe what I should say at the very beginning of the thing, if you don't want to sort of sit through all what I've been chatting around, just skip straight through to the uh, running session because this is going to be a quite a long film. I do apologise. But um, a thousand subscription is a, a special one, so I thought I'd just keep you updated with what's going on. Um, next, the very last thing I'm going to do is just show you the two and the train lamps, the two, the, the variation between the two makes, all right? So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, this is the last bit of the film, guys. Um, so this is the uh, the end of train lamp and all of its electronics uh, by DCC Concepts. Uh, the only thing with it, it's a very good looking lamp. The only thing I would say is the repeat of the light is a little bit on the slow side. Now we'll compare that one to the other one, but bearing in mind that the other one, I had to put it into an end of train lamp. It only comes as an LED. There you are. Slightly more prototypical, I think. And just looking the part, working wonderfully well on the old Freightliner wagon. Bearing in mind that they, you know, they're activated as soon as you put power through the track, okay? That's the way I wanted them. And I think if I can move the camera slightly, I might get the two in shot together and you'll see the difference. There you go. All right. So there we are. And that's what I've been doing. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Stay, stay watching little running sessions of all the bits and pieces, hopefully showing you in, uh, on the track running what I've been up to. Just got to wait for Hunt Couplings now to send me through the couplings to um, close couple the sea cow wagons because they've come out with a an adapter that fits on the sea cows. Okay, guys, thank you very, very, very much. Wow, can't believe it, but thank you. All the best. I'll see you soon. Bye.